Code Lyoko was a French animated show that aired on Cartoon Network from 2004 to 2007. It stood out heavily at the time for its unique art style, tone, and action compared to everything else on the channel, and quickly became a hit, spawning video games, toys, and DVDs. The key defining trait of the show being the hybrid 2D and 3D CGI animation to show the divide between the real world and Lyoko, a virtual man-made computer world within the show, something very novel at the time. Now, some context. In the late 90s and early 2000s, everything had a card game. We're talking Harry Potter, Home Improvement, Austin Powers? Some of these are just collectible games, some of these are battling card games, but companies were always trying to cash in. For how big Kolioko was in its short time airing, you'll notice I didn't mention it having a card game though. That's weird. Big cartoon property, anime adjacent community, could come up with original to the card game Xana monsters to keep it going long after the show ends. Why didn't this awesome show have a card game? Seems like a missed opportunity to me. Well, what if I told you there was one and you just never got the chance to play it? Okay, look, I mean, I get it. Why else would I be making this video, right? I get dragging out the reveal that is literally the title of the video like this can be corny, but I got 10 minutes to fill. Work with me here. A product that never got translated to be released in the rest of the world. And the best part? It's actually a fun game. Released in 2006, only in French for France was the Kolioko card game. Yes, this show actually did have one after all this whole time. Only ever having two starter decks and some promos released, this game was made up of screenshots from the show and official 3D renders of the Lyoko characters. Playing more like a board game, the game supports two or more players up to five for one of each of the main cast. You are all competing with each other to be the first to cast Return to the Past after Xana's Tower has been deactivated to save the day and win the game, recreating a general episode of the show. All five main cast cards are placed in the middle of the board and are common to all players to use throughout the game. They do not belong to your deck. The game uses a resource system called the Victory Points or VP. These are used as a threshold to play cards. Some cards cost 0 VP and give you 1 VP so you can start rolling. There's obstacles your opponent will play to try to slow you down, but they could give you VP if you overcome those obstacles and so forth. Using a card doesn't spend VP, you just need to meet the required amount to cast it. The goal of the game is to gain 20 VP first to use Jeremy's Return to the Past effect after Aelita's Deactivate the Tower effect had been used, which costs 16 VP. It's a fun back and forth that really captures the feeling of a typical episode of the Kolioko TV show. On screen now, you can see what a typical card of the game looks like. If you saw my previous video critiquing TCG arts in the modern day, I really like the border of these cards playing into the personality of the show it's based on, but I digress. There are nine types of cards in this game. One, hero cards, which are the five laid out in the center of the field and are always accessible to all players. These cards are double-sided, one side for their real world self and one for their virtual self in Lyoko. You can switch between them throughout the game, but it will take up one of your limited actions per turn that we'll get to more about later. Two, event cards, which can be compared to spell cards in Yu-Gi-Oh or option cards in Digimon. They have an immediate effect when used and go to the discard pile or graveyard. They're also not associated with any character, so they can be cast whenever. Three, extra cards which are like the hero cards except for the supporting cast of the show and actually go in your deck. 4. Obstacle cards. These are basically like hand traps in Yu-Gi-Oh, except they can only be used when an opponent's character is going to perform an action to interrupt them. Like the show, Xana will try to get in the way or Jim might show up at the worst times. Be careful when trying to slow down your opponent with obstacle cards though. If they're able to clear your obstacle, they will gain some VP to move closer to victory. Equipment cards are pretty self-explanatory. Being vehicles or weapons from the show, they act like equip spells in Yu-Gi-Oh and can only go with the designated character on the card, giving them some kind of bonus. 6. Danger cards work like field spells in Yu-Gi-Oh and provide their standard effects continuously until a player challenges them. No, 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 not those danger cards, Yu-Gi-Oh players. You'll notice a thumbs up or down at the bottom of some of them. This represents whether you were able to defeat the danger when you challenged it and get rewarded or punished for it. 7. Locations are also like field spell cards, except these provide positive effects to the user. 8. Surprise cards. Remember how you have to be careful to not reward your opponent if they defeat your danger or obstacle card? Well, one way to make sure they don't clear your challenge is with surprise cards. Aptly named, these act like hand traps and can be used in a chain once your opponent tries to respond to your danger or obstacle card to further inconvenience them. Both players can use these during a confrontation if they have them in hand and the necessary VP, so it becomes an intense game of tug of war. 9. And finally, action cards. Action cards are like event cards, except they more often require a specific character to use them with. Whether the character is currently in the real world or virtualized will also be a requirement to meet to play these cards. A deck in the Kolioko card game must be a firm 50 cards, no more than 3 copies of the same card per deck. When taking actions with your hero cards, similar to Digimon, there is an active and suspended mode you need to switch between to use them. When a card uses an action for the turn, they become rested and turn sideways. When they are upright, they are active. Once you're all set up, you both draw an opening hand of 5 cards. You get one free mulligan where you can shuffle your hand back into your deck and draw a new 5. So now what does a typical game of Kolioko look like? 
A typical turn of the Kolioko card game usually only allows for two actions. That action can either be playing a card, or a special action as the game calls it. A special action can include drawing an extra card, flip over a hero card, or confront a danger card. You can mix and match these two choices however you like. As far as I can tell though, the guides I can find online don't mention anything about drawing a card for a turn, so your special action to draw a card is how you're normally going to be drawing a card from your deck. There are some cards, however, that give you extra actions per turn so it doesn't feel as bad. The player going first only takes one action for their first turn. Both players start at 0 VP and try to start gaining more as soon as they can. On your first turn, you're likely using the 0 cost VP cards to ramp up extra VP for next turn. Both players take turns using the hero cards until they're all rested at the end of an action, in which case refresh happens and they all become active. This can happen in between actions of the same player's turn if they're able to extend their actions through card effects long enough. When trying to perform actions, your opponent will likely try to stop you with obstacle cards. Danger cards can also be a big nuisance to your VP gaining throughout the game. When confronted with one of these, take a look at the three symbols to the bottom left of the card. These are characteristics. One or more may have a number next to it. This number acts as the benchmark you have to pass to clear the challenge. You will compare it against the same stat of the hero you use to confront the card. The bigger number wins, and you can buff that number on either side with surprise cards if you have the necessary VP to cast them. Surprise cards do not count towards your two actions per turn, so you can play as many as you want in a confrontation. In the case of danger or obstacle cards having two or more characteristics with numbers listed next to them, you choose which to confront with. The person who plays the obstacle card chooses the characteristic to challenge, and the person who chooses to confront the danger card chooses the characteristic to challenge. There are some cards with alternate win conditions, but this is generally how a turn of the Kolioko card game will turn out until one person reaches 20 VP to cast Return to the Past with Jeremy and win. Return to the Past now! You also need to cast Deactivate the Tower with Aelita first to be able to use Jeremy's skill, but any player can cast that skill and it will count towards the requirements for any player to then cast Return to the Past after. So be careful and time it right. It's a pretty fun game that really captures the spirit of the show well. Those Xana monsters sure do show up at the worst moments, and come on, did you really have to play that Gym Danger card now? I was almost to the factory, dude. The Kolioko card game was published by Franz Cartes in 2006. The game did not actually ever have a full booster set released. Instead, there were two large starter decks released, one in red and one in blue, in a bundle. These products contain a starter deck of 55 cards, 5 hero cards, and a deck of 50, and a 12 card booster pack with a chance of 2 rares as a bonus. This info is all brought to us by the Kolioko.fr website, which also lists the price of this product at the time as €13.99. Between the two starter products, they list 170 total unique cards to collect, with some alternate art variations and promo cards released by Petit Luis, a company that makes dairy products of all things. Okay. In terms of describing how it plays, the closest analog I can give you is that it reminds me a lot of the Full Metal Alchemist trading card game. I'm not sure how helpful of a comparison that is, since it wasn't exactly a popular game getting discontinued quick, but hey, it had a DS game. Some of you must have heard of it. But Kolioko has an extremely similar setup of card types and more open-ended gameplay where you could technically progress to your goal ignoring your opponent if you really wanted to, but it's still a benefit for you to interfere with your opponent. Not much else is known about this game other than it existed. No word on why the game never came to English-speaking territories or even Spain, since the show was huge over there at the time. The game never had expansion packs though, so maybe with no future plans, the company thought it wasn't worth the resources of bringing it over to other markets. So it's always been stuck in France as a really obscure oddity of a forgotten TV show. What sucks about all that though is that unless you speak French, you're going to really struggle to play this. There's no translation, so sadly a larger part of the world won't be able to enjoy this fun little game to its fullest extent. Except, you might have noticed some cards being shown off during gameplay were in English in this video. You can play this right now! Check this out! Check these out! Check all of this out! I've translated every release card into English and created a tabletop simulator mod you can download to play with friends right now. It's all free and available with a click of a button on the Steam Workshop if you already own Tabletop Simulator. All the links are in the description below. In the notes section of the mod, you'll also find a link to a website with the game's rules, card types, and turns step-by-step -step in English to help you learn the game. I spent a summer translating and proxying the cards in hopes that more fans of the show and wider card game community can enjoy this fun little oddity. If you have any questions as you read through the cards, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help. Being a card game from 2006, I am sure it's super busted and there's plenty of broken combos waiting to be discovered. Me and my friend in our testing didn't try too hard to break the game, but I'm excited to see what the larger community cooks up. 
because even if there is broken stuff, discovering it and breaking the game is half of the fun of these oddities. Just reading some of these cards, it's clear some of these are waiting to break the game, we just didn't look too hard into it. One of the keywords in this game is called Pursuit, which means when resolved, instead of going to the graveyard, the card goes back to your hand. One of the cards with this keyword lets you just drop four cards for free. In this game, there is no deck out win condition. You just shuffle your discard pile into a new deck. I'm sure there's some insane broken turbo strat waiting and hiding there. Code Lyoko was a huge show in my childhood that started developing my preferences, so as a card game YouTuber now, it's cool to find a connection to bridge my two interests on the channel. These cards are pretty hard to come by now, but if you stock eBay long enough, you'll find a listing here and there if you're interested in owning physical cards. If any viewers have some they're willing to let go, I'm always looking to pick up more of these cards if you want to hit me up on Twitter at victory underscore taste. I'm also on Blue Sky as Taste of Victory. Thanks for watching. This is something I wanted to make a video about forever. I wasn't sure how to go about it, but figured I'd finally just do it. I prefer to have physical cards to show it off, but hey, they're hard to come by like I said, so Tabletop Simulator is the next best option. I'm sick as I recorded this currently, so I hope that didn't come across too harshly in the audio. I hope you all found this interesting and find a fun little game to play for yourself. I think the larger card game community can really benefit a lot from the fighting game community and how we discover old games and play old stuff that is dead just for like the fun of how broken and silly and aesthetically cool it is. There's not like a pot of money to be won, there's not a competitive game to grind out, but you might discover something new that you like and you might discover new lessons to take back to you with your main game so hopefully this is something that helps contribute to that kind of mindset becoming a thing in card games because you know outside of the big four you don't really find a lot of dead games being like played like that anyways i'm going a little bit of a tangent here again i hope you enjoyed the video i love kolioko and i hope the kolioko community appreciates this being something they can play with now and i'm looking forward to hopefully playing with viewers too if that's something you guys want to do i'll see you guys in the next video and until then remember to stay hungry until you get a taste of victory